hell do you think you're doing? That building is totally contaminated with spoilers. Listen, welcome to a very special shut up and sit down review, but let's stick to procedure. First, because this is a game with spoilers, I'm going to initially review it involving nothing from inside the box, showing you nothing. And then if you want, in the back half of this review, we're gonna cover a few things inside the box, still no spoilers, but we just wanna make sure you get the best possible experience from this amazing game. And then hopefully you won't die from exposure either. So let's start by talking about Pandemic. This is an award-winning game where two to four players battle four different diseases at once, and it remains one of the best ever introductions to board gaming it's uh, it's evocative and it's and it's unpredictable yet fair and the theme is so immediately exciting to everyone and it's got that lovely global thing i'm not going to cover it in this video if you want to learn more about it google shut up and sit down pandemic to see our coverage on it today we're looking at the enormous box of pandemic legacy a design from matt leacock who originally made pandemic and rob davio who made risk legacy and if you're not sure what a legacy game is it's basically a board game designed by Willy Wonka. In Pandemic Legacy, you're going to be playing through the worst ever year in the Center for Disease Control's history, and things are gonna go very wrong very quickly, and the game is going to surprise you so very much. Look here, okay? Imagine this is the Pandemic board, okay? As you play Pandemic, cards are going to appear with more rules. You're going to destroy pre-existing rules. You're going to doctor other rules with stickers. You're going to wipe certain cities on the map. You're what, off the map? That would make more sense. You're going to find new characters in strange new locations. Other characters might die. And listen, a lot of this stuff is baked into the game, but most of it is going to be unique to your copy of Pandemic Legacy. You're going to create your own problems, your own twists. You're going to destroy your own cities. And that means in just a game or two, your copy of Pandemic Legacy is going to be unique to anyone else's in the world. Oh, and did I not mention there are eight secret compartments in this box? Eight! Every one of which adds new components to this board game. So in other words, Pandemic Legacy is just like Risk Legacy, but with one vitally important difference. Pandemic was a great game to begin with, unlike Risk. So, in total, you've got Pandemic, which is a great game. You've got the driving force of wanting to see what twists are around every corner. We've got the constant introduction of new rules, which mean that no game is ever the same twice. Most importantly, we also have the fact that when you lose a game of Pandemic, which is already tense to begin with, there's the sense that you're losing just one battle in a war with the threat of losing control of the board of upgrades that you've got. <laughs> There's a meta game which I'll get to later. It's absolutely incredible, okay? There's one flaw I will say, which is that Pandemic already had a problem with quarterbacking, which was experienced players telling less experienced ones to do. So if you've got a player who's particularly unforceful, they might have a bad time. But I don't think that's gonna be a problem for a great many people. And if that's not a problem, I would say that Pandemic Legacy is unquestionably a must buy. And probably my game of the year. This was a nine out of 10, and this is a great dollop of bacteria-infested cream that makes it a 10. I want you guys to do something for me. If you trust us and you think that's enough and you're convinced, you might not want to watch this video any further. You're gonna get a little more out of your very first game of Pandemic Legacy, or if you take off the cellophane when all of your friends are gathered around, that could make this even more exciting for you. For everybody else, if you don't mind seeing what's inside this box, you can watch the rest of the video. It's locked. I don't know why I thought it wouldn't be locked. Now, I can't show you our pandemic board. It's been contaminated. I could show you bits, but I'll do that later. So instead, I'm going to show you something that's in the box, all right? In addition to these dossiers full of numbers and letters that are all sealed, and you're going to be popping these open when the game tells you to, and this enormous sticker sheet, often you and your friends will be choosing where to change game components and how, and the manual. This is what powers Pandemic Legacy. This is the Legacy deck and it will say stop and look at the first card in this when you set up your game for January, for example. Legacy cards that you've used will go in the bin and very slowly you'll work your way through this deck, adding more cards or different cards to the game. And often you'll be getting clearance to open these eight packets. These are like Christmas, okay? And what I want to explain is that these packets which contain new components are different from a game simply coming with an expansion because 
you don't know quite how they're used. And this becomes part of a meta puzzle in Pandemic. So you're playing Pandemic and you all know how to play Pandemic and then you'll open a box and, and I'm making this up, this contains speedboats. And you'll say, why do we need speedboats? And then in 20 minutes, the sky will fill with spores and you'll go, oh my God, we can travel around in speedboats and evolve, avoid the spores. I can be the speedboat specialist. And you have to work out constantly exactly how best to achieve your goals and what your goals are. I've covered the board so you can look at it. Just let me explain why there's so much to discuss in Pandemic Legacy, so much to argue about and worry about. So you're playing this game of Pandemic, which is in no way easy, where you're running around and curing cubes and preventing outbreaks and making sure that you discover cures, but you're also trying to make, it sh make sure that the game state becomes tenable for future games because, for example, you don't want major transport hubs to start rioting. Every time a city outbreaks, you place a sticker there, they start to freak out. A one does nothing. A two or three means that a city's rioting. You can't fly in or out. CDCs are destroyed there. You don't want to let that happen, and it only gets worse from there. But also, you're trying to play the longer game, the meta game, of which upgrades to pick. Every game, win or lose, you can pick two upgrades. You can make permanent CDCs. You can give characters skills, all this kind of stuff. But... That's also stuff you can lose if you don't play correctly. You can lose those permanent CDCs if a city starts to riot, and if a character is ever in a city when it outbreaks, they get a scar. That's a permanent disability on their character. If you get three scars, you become lost. Or if you're ever a city in a city when it becomes fallen, you become lost. And that's a wonderful, cold bit of language. Are they dead? Have you lost contact with them? Have they deserted? It doesn't matter. They just don't work for the CDC anymore. Don't think about it. You've got a job to do. But if the real cost of losing in Pandemic Legacy is that you'll lose control of the board, that you'll lose your upgrades, that you'll destroy your progress, there's an unreal cost of losing too. And this is probably my favourite thing about it. I don't want to let London riot, not because it means we can't fly in. I don't want the city to collapse, not because it means we can't drive in. I want to save it because it's my home. And because every time we put a sticker on that city, I imagine my favourite views tinged with fire and death and people upturning vans to try and get to medicine that doesn't even exist. I don't want to lose my medic because he's a human being and he's got my name on. He's not some hero in descent who's going to die fighting a sorcerer. He's a doctor. Which brings us to relationships. This is a slot that is initially empty and unexplained when you start Pandemic Legacy, but you do fill it with relationships you have with other characters. You might be a co-worker with someone, you might be friends with someone else, and a rival with someone else, and this drip of theme brings your character to life. And when they start suffering or you lose them, that's a thought-provoking experience for everybody. Ultimately, everyone's going to finish their campaign of Pandemic Legacy due to some interesting balancing mechanisms. First and foremost among them, funding cards. You're going to start with four of these superpowers like hardy populations and local initiatives and remote treatment. But every time you win, the CDC, seeing you have the situation in hand, will cut your funding and you'll go into the next mission with two less of these. But every time you lose, you get two more to go in. So ultimately, you're going to muddle your way through Pandemic Legacy. But what counts as winning? If you finish every mission like a dutiful civil servant but the world is in tatters, if you lose your character, is that a win? If you die a hero, is that a win? Are you trying to play it safe, not knowing what's going to come next in the box? Or are you going to just go rampant and treat every mission like every single life matters? Interestingly, box number eight in Pandemic Legacy is only opened if you lose four games in a row. I have no idea what's in it, and I hope I never find out. On the rare chance that you're still not sold. I'll tell you just one spoiler-free story from our game. There was a continent that was in a terrible situation and we all decided that my character had to go in. And he would go in and get the support from everybody else to do his job. It was dangerous, but he was the only one to do it. So we send him in and then the very next turn, the table decides they can't support him. He's probably got it. The priority should be elsewhere. And there was a terrible, terrible outbreak, which caused a chain reaction. Outbreak on outbreaks, infected, infecting more infected. People <laughs> tearing the cities down, terrible rioting, awful, awful. You had two scars, three scars and you die, so he barely got out with his life. And on my turn, I had to decide what scars to give him. 
and I gave him regretful and paranoid, meaning he no longer shared information and he'd no longer leave a city with three cubes in it. He didn't trust the CDC anymore after they'd betrayed him. And the very next game, the table had to decide whether to use this character with two scars or not. After I did my job, they had to decide whether to discard me as a liability. You've got to buy this game, people. Game, game of the year. Game of the year. And look, I got through the whole review without mentioning these little things. Oh, f Okay, you're going to be contaminated now. Just don't leave your house. The authorities will be on their way. Your internet connection's probably going to get cut. Just don't communicate with any-